All right, um, the boys have gone to bed, and tonight I have a bit of a dyeing project. The first dyeing project I'm gonna tackle in my new house. Um, I am currently knitting this sweater here, which is the Angelina Pullover by Mary Ann Benedito. It was in the fall 2017 interweave knits. And um, I've got it started here. Finished the yoke section. I've come into the body. Um, I have made some changes to the body shaping compared to the original pan, uh, pattern. Uh, either way, the body's just stockinette. Um, it's a plain stockinette with a cabled yoke. And I am alternating skeins of uh, Prairie Dye Studio. And uh, that's a Canadian Alberta dyer. Um, and this is on her worsted weight base. And this colorway here is my old black powder. Um, I picked up six skeins from the same dye pot, probably close to two years ago now. So this has been a sweater quantity sitting in my stash for a long time. And since last fall, when this issue of interweave knits came out, this is the sweater that I had in mind for it, knowing full well that it would be a game of yarn chicken. Um, Melissa, who is the dyer behind Prairie Dye Studio, also runs the Prairie Fiber Festival up in Lacombe, and that was last weekend. So I went um, hoping to go by her booth to hopefully pick up a seventh skein of my old black powder, knowing that it would be not the same dye pot, obviously, but if I alternated it in at, say, the bottom of the sleeves, hopefully it would uh, not bother me too, too much. She didn't have any, so this is the situation that I'm in. Of my original six skeins, um, most of them look really good. They look like this one here in the middle where they sort of have a black section, a dark brown section, and sort of a variegated um, dark to light brown section. The sixth skein is this one here, which is actually lacking any of the black at all pretty much. There's a tiny bit in here, but um, my guess is she does a lot of, she does her yarn kettle dyed um, with multiple skeins in one pot, and my guess is that this guy here missed out on the application of the black dye. Um, getting more of the brown, whereas this one here, you can see clearly has that black section. Anyways, she did not have any more, this is my cat Lucy, by the way, is coming to say hi. Um, she didn't have any more skeins of my old black fiber with her at the festival, and I didn't want to wait uh, on the off chance that she dies any anytime soon. But she did have um, this skein here, which is um, her whiskey barrel colorway. So this one here is actually quite similar on one half. So if you put these two halves beside each other, this over here blends in nicely. But the other half, which is where the brown would be, um, is just white with black speckles. So I picked it up figuring I would see what I could do with my own dyes to bring this one into the same sweater party as the rest. And at the same time, with Lucy's help, she's actually blending in quite nicely with this sweater, I'm gonna add some black to this one. So I'm gonna dye two skeins tonight, and I do them, gonna do them in just a roasting pan here. Um, I find that these enamel roasting pans are way less expensive than the stainless steel and to my knowledge, the enamel coating should be non-reactive as long as the surface doesn't get scratched. So far, I haven't had any problems dying in them. Lucy, you probably shouldn't be licking the pan. Anyways, um, as far as dyes, I'm going to use the Jacquard Jet Black, which, Lucy just fell off the table. I'm gonna use the Jacquard Jet Black, which is a black, which I believe breaks out brown. So black dyes are quite often combination dyes. Um, instead of being black pigment, there'll be a combination of pigments in here to make up the black. Some blacks, when they break, as in um, as the dye spreads, you might get an edge that isn't, like an edge around your black that isn't black. That's a poor, poor um, description of the process. Google breaking black. Um, there's lots of videos, particularly with Wilton's food coloring, but some blacks are red-blue based and will give you a purple 
um, that comes out of them and others are more of a brown base and this one I believe 99% sure breaks brown as opposed to purple so for this project this is the black I want to use it's also um, I have this and I have black Wilton's food coloring and I know that the Wilton's food coloring breaks purple so I'll go with that one and then I have Jacquard brown so I'm going to do them in the same pan I'm going to add brown to this guy add black to that one hopefully they come together um, to be in the same color party as the rest of my sweater and if not then I will problem solve later um, I'm going to go ahead and make up liquid stock solutions of both of these um, and probably do like a low water immersion and apply some of my stock solution via a 60 ml syringe. So I'll make up those solutions um, and then I'll tell you how much dye I put into how much water and see if I can't find my tripod to show you how I apply the dye. All right, so I have 500 mils uh, mls of hot water in here and 100 mls of vinegar in here and I'm going to mix up my jet black and I'm going to put um, hopefully I have yeah I should have I'm going to put three teaspoons three teaspoons into what will be 600 mls total liquid um, if I didn't have I'm completely out of citric acid right now so I'm using vinegar if I didn't have or if I did have citric acid, I would do 600 mils of water and like maybe a teaspoon of the citric acid. Instead, I'm doing about 100 mils of vinegar. You're just ballparking it and writing it down. Anyways. a half mil um, measure here, or half teaspoon that I'm using. And I think I actually just need to use all of it. Okay. And then I'm gonna mix it up into here. Um, if I was being a better person, I would have probably actually mixed um, mix my jet black dye in uh, in a small amount of water, the powder. That way you can sort of make it dissolve into a paste kind of, and then you might be a little bit likely, less likely to get chunks at the bottom of here. But this big glass beaker is large enough for me to stir in without sloshing over the sides. So this one might break a little bit purple too, it's hard to tell here, um, but you can kind of see against the white here that there is a bit of a purple tinge. But I feel like when I've speckled with this, the speckles break out a little bit brown, so we'll see. Anyways, this makes a really concentrated um, dye stock and you use a surprisingly small amount of this when you go to uh, dye your yarn. I still have some uh, solid undissolved stuff at the bottom here, so I'm going to use my syringe to draw up some more and sort of blast it against the bottom in here. So I make sure I get everything into my cheese whiz jar. Okay, let me grab my lid to my cheese whiz jar. So 
this stock will keep until I use it up, essentially. And uh, I'll label the jar after, just with the, um, the date and uh, the color. But that's my black stock. I'll go ahead and do the same after I rinse this out really well um, with my brown stock. Alright, so I have my two skeins, which in all honesty, I soaked for all of maybe half an hour. Um, I soaked them in water with about, uh, about a half a cup of vinegar in the water. Um, plus there's vinegar in my dye stock, so theoretically my acidity should be just fine. I don't have any um, litmus paper to test it right now. Um, but yeah, so I'm an impatient dyer, so I did not soak them for the recommended, you know, hour or two hours to really saturate the yarn. Which is fine, as long as you realize that that might mean that you get incomplete penetrance into the yarn. But for yarns that are kettle dyed and variegated, um, it's not going to matter that much. If you were going for a solid, true, monocolor yarn, definitely, absolutely, I would soak the crap out of that yarn and I would not dye it in this method. Um, but for this, eh, as long as it seems wet, it's probably wet enough. Um, you may already be able to see. So what I did was, this is the um, my old black powder, the one that I bought originally with my set of six that was missing out on the black, but you can see that I've already added a big section of black here and here. Um, what I did was my empty dye um, powder container. I, being frugal, rinsed it out with a little bit of water and poured it onto these two spots. And that's probably all the black that I'll add for that skein. For this guy here, um, I put the skein down in the pan with the white and gray speckled side up. And then when I rinsed out my large um, glass beaker that I mixed up my brown dye stock in, I just poured my rinse water over top of this one, and you can already see I've got a brown splotch here and a brown splotch here. So clearly not enough brown, just in comparison. I'm going to go ahead and add some brown and see if I can't bring this skein to look closer to the one above it. And you need less than you think. And actually, I'm going to go ahead. So this right now is the concentrated dye stock in here. I pulled up 20 mils of it. This is a lot of dye. So you can see that where it's speckling on, it's going to be nice and dark brown, like really dark. And I'm just going to use my gloved hand to work it down into the yarn because I don't want only the top to get color and the bottom to remain white. The nice thing about doing a low water immersion like this and um, the water that's in here so far is only what came with the yarn when I lifted it out of my pot of water, as well as what I rinsed onto the yarn. So the yarn is sitting in maybe about a centimeter of water right now. Um, the nice thing about doing this way is that you can poke around and make sure that you're covering as much as you want to cover. So this is a nice dark brown section. I'll do another dark brown section over here and sort of work that dye into my yarn. Now, I'm not afraid about having a little bit of the white show through because um, my other skeins have occasional little shots of whiter or lighter colored areas. Um, I just don't want a ton of the white showing through. So 20 mils was good for this darker brown color. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pull up some of the, move the yarn out of here. I'm gonna pull up some of the water from in here you can see some of the dye came with it. So I pulled up 30 mils of water and now I'm going to pull up into the same syringe um, 20 mils of dye and mix the two. So now this is less concentrated. I might even go and top this up with even more water. So I've diluted the dye in this syringe now um, by a little over 50% and when I apply it on it's going to give me a lighter brown hypothetically. Yep. And just getting in here. This is super wash yarn, so I'm not worried about touching it too much or having anything sort of bad happen to it. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um, 
I mean, I'll get rid of this into here somewhere just because I don't want to, um, you can't put it back into your stock because it's been diluted. But, yep, call that good enough. So I added black to this top skein, which ended up being just the black that I rinsed out of my um, powdered dye bottle. And I added a whole bunch of Jacquard Brown to the bottom skein. And so I'm gonna put this in my oven. Um, I don't remember the time or the temperature off the top of my head right now. I will check that and get back to you. All right, so I had it in the oven at 200 Fahrenheit for an hour. And you can see that the dye water um, in between the skeins is, you can see it's clear, but if, you know, if you dip some paper towel in there, you can see it's not picking up any color. So all of the dye um, has been set into the urn. So I'll go ahead and rinse these, and then tomorrow, once it's all dry, I'll show you the finished result. All right, so uh, they're all dried now. Um, these are the two skeins that I dyed. This is that third one that I had um, of the original, my old black powder colorway that uh, I did not change. And there's the sweater that they're getting knit into. Um, so the original, my old black powder, this one actually has a lot more black than I feel like I thought it did originally, um, but it's here. Uh, this one here is the one that had all that white with black speckles. This is the, um, the alternate colorway, the whiskey barrel, I believe. And this is the mild black powder to which I added black dye. Um, anyways, you can see that they definitely look like they're all at the same party now. And uh, I'm almost running out of the two that I'm currently alternating. You can see I'm alternating one with a little bit more black with one with a little bit less black. Um, so I'll need to cake up two of these. I'll probably pick um, these two to go for the bottom of the sweater um, and into the sleeves and then start working this one in um, after. But hopefully it shouldn't look like um, this is, was a separate colorway because when you see it here on the sweater, it, it looks like it's blending in pretty good, hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll try to remember to make sure that I share the finished project with you uh, when I finish knitting it. That's all for now, and uh, happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy dyeing, spinning, uh, whatever it is you do with fiber, just keep on experimenting.